So you remember that time that you were between blessings and you couldn't afford a new wig and the devil hopped on you and you're forming your sister. Next thing you know, she started fighting you, snatched off your wig, threw it in a garbage disposal, and then next thing you know, it was all mangled up and caught on fire. Well, I'm here to help you out with all those problems. Not the ones with your sister. I'm not Dr. Phil. I mean, let's be real. Dr. Phil can't really help too many people. I mean, the catch me outside girl. Come on. Anyway, last time I showed you guys how to take a wig that was kind of mangled looking like this and make it look like that baby back there. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys a different restoration technique. So, uh, you can take your kind of old beat up wigs, uh, which this one's honestly not in as bad a shape as that one there was. That one had been through the ringer. But this one is still really stiff on this underneath section in the nape, so we definitely want to take care of that. And uh, it's just, it's dirty, so we're gonna need to do some general care and maintenance on this unit here. Now, this one is about, I'd say, two and a half years old. That one there was three years old, so that one actually has been worn quite a bit more. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So we're going to begin like last time by taking this wig and tossing it on the wig head. Make sure you pull it down in the back. Sometimes I forget and it just ends up being a sloppy mess. It's gonna come up on you later. From there, you can go ahead and pin it in place. That way it's not sliding all over the place on you like a baby in the bathtub. I don't know why this baby is so slippery. You know what I'm saying? If you got kids, let me know in the comments below. Because I'm telling you, people don't understand the struggle them until you're trying to wash a newborn. And the next thing you know, you just feel like you're going to drop your child all the way across the house. What is going on? Child, I promise it's like every time that you get to doing something, all of a sudden the telemarketers or your mama or somebody else want to call. In this instance, it was Allison. But nonetheless. So we're going to do the same as last time and put this baby on the wig head. From there, we're going to take our wig brush. Now, I would definitely recommend the wig brush this time which, just so you guys can see it, uh, because of the metal bristles, and I'll explain more to you guys later, but we're gonna start out the same as last time by just kind of loosely, oh, this isn't gonna separate. Um, well, we're just gonna start out by detangling this hair. So start from the ends, work your way up, and I'll see you guys in a minute. This shouldn't take too long, because like I said, this one's not as matted as the last one was. Okay, so now we're finished brushing it out, and you guys can see it looks pretty darn good. If I were basic, I would probably just leave it like this, but this isn't a basic tutorial. Plus, it's still a little rough on the underside here, so we definitely want to get that taken care of, because we don't need it looking like she was rolling around with the windows down, or like she was Beyonce in a concert after her hair got caught in the fan. So we definitely want to make sure that we've got that nice and smooth, and I'm going to show you guys how to take care of this. Now I will tell you, this one is uh, really dirty, so this could be interesting. Let's go on into the kitchen. All right, so we're here in the kitchen and we have the sink here filled with warm water. Again, that's warm and not hot like your stepbrother's breath, warm. Now you wanna make sure that it's not too hot because it can make it excessive and prone to tangling, things like that. Anytime that you are cleansing, you want it to be a gentle process, not something that's gonna be excessively harsh and cause matting and tangling of the wig. I'm gonna be using the Dr. Bronner's Hemp and Citrus uh, 18 in 1 Castile Soap, but you can honestly use just about any cleanser you like. You can use shampoo, it doesn't much matter. It's synthetic hair, which means it's plastic. Even the ones that say that they're synthetic human blend, trust me, they're not that amazing. You can just use a standard cleanser. So we're gonna take a bit of that and I'm just gonna add it to my warm water. Notice I don't need a ton. From there, you're gonna give it a good swirl, okay? Now, if you don't wanna do this in your kitchen sink because you don't feel like cleaning the corn out of there and you don't want corn in your weave, then you can do it in a basin like this here, which I found for literally a dollar from Dollar Tree. But honestly, this just isn't big enough for me. I need it to be a bit bigger. This is not gonna cut it. So, from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this baby right on into the sink and we're gonna get on in here. Okay, so now we've got this wig in the sink and you guys can see the color of the water is already cloudy from the soap, but I am going to go ahead and begin to just kind of dunk and cleanse this wig. So you want to make sure everything is pushed underneath there. Like always, I will say this one was a bit dirtier than the last one. We do have some makeup in the part line there. And if you guys can see, like the moment it gets wet, look at this. That is uh, gel, it's got to be glued, all sorts of stuff. So I mean, you guys can see 
just that little bit of time in there. Like this is all along the hairline. This is the stuff that you guys need to make sure you're getting out of your wigs on a regular basis because if you're not, I look like a huge booger, if you're not, uh, you can actually end up with issues with breakouts on your face, things like that. So make sure that you guys are taking the time to regularly cleanse your unit. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of dip it in there and massage the lace a bit. And that's just gonna help to work some of those products out of the lace. Don't get crazy, but you know, just, just do a little bit. Now, you guys can see there's some makeup there, so what I'm gonna do is just put a splash of the cleanser right there in the part line, and I'm just gonna scrub from the underside, not from the top, because I don't want the hair to get tangled up, but I do wanna make sure the lace is clean, especially on the part that's gonna touch the skin, okay? From there, some of that will have worked to the top, just like so, and from there, I can just kinda make sure I'm going in the direction that the hair flows and kind of massaging that lace just to get all of that product on off of there. Notice I'm not scrubbing like crazy, I'm not roughing up the hair, I'm literally just rubbing the pad of my thumb right across that center part line just to get it clean. And you guys can see the, well I don't know if you can see on camera, but the color of the suds is changing to like a brownish color just due to the makeup. Um, I did notice there was some hairspray on this wig as well. So this one, this one uh, is in need of some cleansing for sure. From there, give it a good couple dunks. We're gonna dunk it like Jordan. And then, oh, it's like Jordan. And we're also dunking it like it's the Jordan River. We're just gonna baptize that thing. All right, so now that we've done this, we're basically just gonna go ahead and, and go through here. I'm doing a bit extra just because there's a good degree of product in here. Some of it I can still feel in the hair, so I wanna make sure, like, I don't know if you guys can see here on camera, the little speckles there of product. Is it showing? I hope it is. Otherwise, I'm wasting your time. But nonetheless, uh, this wig does need a good cleansing in there, so I'm gonna focus a little bit more attention on that section, and there we're just gonna apply a bit of cleanser directly to that section of the wig. I'm gonna go ahead and take the hair and I'm just gonna lightly go downward. I don't want to rough the hair up, so I'm not gonna scrub. I'm just kinda lightly going in the direction that this hair flows. And we're just gonna use that to get some of this excess product off of the unit. Now because I know it's there, I'm also gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is one of the most important parts of wig care, like look at how the water is looking. I want you guys to understand, like your products, sweat, debris, oil, all of that gets caught up in these wigs. And before you know it, you're having tons of issues with the scalp and all that underneath the wig because basically this is sitting on here and it's holding in heat, it's opening up your pores and it's causing breakouts, all sorts of issues. So make sure you're keeping those units nice and clean. Make sure that especially like the base of the wig and here, when you've got a good degree of product and stuff on there, make sure that base is really clean as well. The corners of your lace, like right in here, where it's gonna be sitting directly on the skin, all of that, you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. And we're gonna give it a final couple dumps. Okay, so she's feeling pretty slippery, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna squeeze it out. We're just gonna to toss it over there. And this side, like look, at the difference in that water now. All of that was in that wig. This is why it's important to regularly cleanse these babies because even when they look clean, there's a good chance that they're not and this could cause a number of different issues. This can also lead to a lot of stiffness in the wigs. So we're gonna go ahead and drain that, but before we do, let's put a strainer in there because I don't wanna have to call a plumber later. And then I'm gonna refill this with cool water and we'll dunk it again for a final rinse. Okay, so we refilled with cool water and now I'm just gonna take this unit and I'm gonna toss it right back into the water. You wanna make sure that you are keeping your hand kind of on the inside just to keep that hair from getting uh, caught in there because you don't want it to get caught in the combs and all that underneath, underneath the wig. See, like there's already some that's in there and honey, you start getting hair caught in there you're gonna have some issues on your hands. Like look at how much just from that little bit it's trying to tangle and knot up. So you definitely wanna make sure you're keeping bulk of that hair out of the middle of the wig. So we're just gonna give it a good couple dunks. 
just to make sure there's no residue left in this wig whatsoever. Okay, so you guys can see water's pretty clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this unit and we're gonna toss it in, well, Lord, it would help if you guys could see. We're gonna toss it in this towel that I have right over here. Um, and from there, I'm gonna go back to the filming space. So we're back in the filming space and I have this baby pinned onto the mannequin head. Now, the key thing that you would wanna remember is if you're satisfied with the wig at this point and you don't feel as though you need to re uh, service it, rechange it, if cleansing worked, let it air dry, totally good to go. In this instance, these ends are still somewhat rough, so what I'm going to do is actually revamp this unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through here and we're traveling through there pretty easily on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and section off this bottom section of the hair here. And we're gonna go ahead and pin that up. Once I've pinned that up out of the way, I'm gonna give this hair a good brushing. And if you recall in the last video, I showed you guys how to do this with a round brush. Uh, in this instance, we're gonna be using a different brush to do the trick. So I'm gonna be using the wig brush. And the reason why I'm doing this is because of the metal bristles. Now the metal bristles to it are uh, nice because they'll heat up and as I'm trying to smooth this hair out, it's going to aid me in smoothing that out without me having to put a ton of work into it. So you guys will hopefully be able to get a chance to see what I'm talking about. So I've got my blow dryer here. We're gonna put this baby on medium heat and we're gonna just go ahead and blow this baby straight. Now you guys can see here, this basically has blown the hair straight and we're smooth all the way down to the ends. That's what we're looking for. We're just gonna get it nice and smooth all the way through before we jump to the next step. Now the primary goal here is not to get this hair extremely silky straight. It's just to make sure that the ends are nice and smooth because we just don't want it to be tangling. So I should be able to easily run my fingers through that hair. If you can't, you need to blow dry it a bit smoother. Okay, so from here I've got this baby blow dried. You guys can see my fingers are able to pass through it really easily, which is a good thing. Now I do have these wire mesh uh, rollers here. I like them because like, if you've ever used Velcro rollers, I've got some somewhere in this room. Um, I don't know where they're at though, so we ain't looking for those right now. But if you've ever used Velcro rollers, they can actually cause the hair to be a little frizzy and all that, it doesn't get as smooth. With these, you're able to still allow air and things to pass through there, which is really nice, but uh, it doesn't rough up the hair at all. So I've got several packs of those, of those that I got from my local beauty supply store. I'm gonna be utilizing those for this set. And I also swung by my local craft store. I've got some pins like this. If you can't find those, you can also use T-pins like this here. And yeah, but we're gonna go ahead and use these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take sections of this hair. And actually, let me lower this down just a bit because I want to make sure you guys can see clearly what's going on in the top. So I'm going to move you just a bit closer and I'm going to go ahead and pick out sections of hair right around the size of my roller. Now honestly I would rather start on the other side but yeah I, I'm closer to this side so <laughs> that's how that's going to go. Now typically I would go ahead and wrap uh, this is a bit differently, but because this wig is already pre-cut, I'm going to have to do it a bit differently in general. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it up to where about the ends from the bangs stop. And I'm just going to wrap around the straight hair there from the rest of it. And I'm going to smooth that out as I roll. Same thing here, smoothing out those ends as I roll. Now keep in mind the angle that I'm holding this at, the part lines here, so I'm bringing this basically up and out of the natural range. So if I were taking it straight out from where it was, it would be here. 
I want this to be on base, perfectly on base, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it out of its range and then roll it down, and that way it sits perfectly on the part line that I took it from. Now, once you do that, you're gonna take these pins and just poke it right on through there and into the mannequin head, like so. And we're literally just gonna continue this step throughout the entire wig. So again, bringing this up like this here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a roller, taking it to where the ends of the bang stop, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap around. I wanna wrap around smoothly because I want that curl to be pretty consistent throughout the entire thing. So just kinda gradually wrapping that as we go. Just like so. Now I understand this can be a little tedious, especially if you've never rolled rollers before. Um, but it just leaves it with such a gorgeous set. Uh, it's I feel like it's worth it. And I mean, it leaves it with a nice curl. Uh, this is a great way for you to also be able to completely, not just revive a wig, but change up the way that it falls and all that in general. So just so you guys can see with the T-pins, same premise. Uh, make sure you don't stab yourself as you're doing that too. But uh, from there, just stabbing it into the mannequin head. And this is why I feel like it's important to go ahead and utilize a wig head like this because it allows you the ability to do this with no clips, with no uh, extra pinning on the sides. You don't have to worry about extra bulk. So I'm gonna continue this process all throughout the head and I'll show you guys what happens when I'm finished. All right, Glam Fam, so we have this baby all rolled up as you guys can see here and we've got those pins in place. Why is she sliding down? We've got those pins in place uh, so that way you guys can kind of see it's very important that you do this as neat as possible because the more messy it is, the more messy your set is going to be. So, make sure that you do it well. Um, now, I have a very cheap steamer here, um, which it doesn't look like steam's coming out of yet. It is not, but it should be on the way. But I have a very cheap steamer here. Um, honestly, if you plan on doing this on a regular, I would really advise getting a more quality steamer. You can use it for your clothes or for your weave. Oh, it's boiling, so we should be ready here in a moment. There we go, there's some steam. So, uh, basically what you would do is you're gonna go ahead and put it up close. Just blast that hair with that steam. Now you can see there's really not a ton of option for blasting because, again, it's a cheap steamer. But nonetheless, uh, we're still going to go ahead and utilize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to let this steam hit on each individual roller. And after I have done that, then I'm going to move on to my next step, which is honestly a really easy step. All right, so once you have steamed that, you can either use like a bag like this here, uh, which is a bit thicker than like your standard shopping bag. Um, I like it for that reason, but just make sure if it has a design on it, the design is on the outside, especially if you have a light colored wig, because these colors can come off and stain the wig. But I'm not going to use this one. I'm actually going to use one of those ones that you get out of the store that are designed to keep your food warm or cold while you're shopping. And it's just an insulated bag. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that right on over this, and we're going to blast that steam on up into the bag, like so. Now the nice thing about that is it traps in that heat and allows you to fully set the wig. And especially because it's a thermal bag from HEB, uh, because it's a thermal bag, it keeps that temperature in there really nicely and you don't have to worry about like any type of um, coloration coming off, anything like that, like you would with a standard bag like that there. So it's just a lot more efficient um, I can feel that heat on the outside of the bag, which is a good thing. I'm kind of scared to reach up under there. Yeah, that heat is holding, baby. So, that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and then I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'll take the bag off, and then I'm gonna let it completely dry. All right, Glam Fam, so this has sat for about 10 minutes now, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this bag off here, because it's cooled down quite a bit within there. 
uh, was with that being open. Now, I will say it is still somewhat warm, and that's a good thing. There's a, a really simple reason for why it's warm still. Uh, part of that is the type of rollers that we use. Uh, because it does have metal on the inside, which hopefully you guys can see that metal spring there. Because it does have that on the inside, that helps to conduct and retain that heat there. So that way your rollers stay nice and warm. It just kind of helps to set that hair. Uh, and the nice thing with setting it with steam is it's not getting wet like it does when you shampoo it. So it should take significantly less time for this hair to dry. So instead of like the boiling method that we've done in other videos where you're having to let it dry overnight or sometimes for more than a day, in this instance I'd say maybe 30 minutes to 2 hours depending on how much hair is in the wig and how long the wig is. Because this was a longer wig, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit longer of a period of time and then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like when we take it down. Are you ready? Glam fam! It's been about an hour and guess what? This baby is dry. So let's take her down. Actually, you know, I need, you know what I need? I need that $1 bucket. Stand by. This video is sponsored by Dollar Tree, where you can find buckets for $1. As part of the sponsorship deal, they paid me $1. I wish. They didn't even pay me that. They didn't pay me. And it's, they, didn't, they never even contacted me. I mean, why? I can't just get a sponsor. Okay, so look, look at this, you guys. Nice, right? So I'm going to go ahead and begin taking these babies out and we're just basically removing the pins and then from there I'm going to go ahead and unroll and we're going to do that starting from the bottom and working your way up uh, because if you start from the top basically you're going to end up having hair getting caught uh, in rollers and all it's just going to be a mess just trust me here start from the bottom. Okay, so I've literally got all of the rollers out. So let's just toss that over here. And look look at how these curls are looking, you guys. Like, they're looking really good. If I wanted to just finger tossle through this, I could. And actually, let me go ahead and bring my fingers through some. I want you guys to see how this makes this wig literally look brand new. Like, look at, look at this. I'm telling you guys, like, if you are going and spending more money on wigs, like, you could be saving so much much money with just doing something like this. Now I understand that it's going to take a little bit of time, but I mean it's, uh, you just like that's literally like 50 or 60 bucks saved. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a wave brush like this here and let me tilt her over. I'm going to brush through here. Oh, I almost fell out of the seat. So I'm going to go ahead and brush through here. So let me back you guys up just a little bit. And the reason why I'm brushing through here with this brush is because I want it to be uh, enough with the bristles to kind of mold everything together, but I don't want to make the hair frizzy. So I'm using this because it's a soft bristled brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and brush that hair together with this brush here. So going ahead and bringing that hair on up and around and it's nice because then from there I can go ahead and encourage those waves to kind of stand out in there and all of that like you guys are seeing here. So if I wanted to take that, we can take it, bring it up, all sorts of different stuff. So I'll kind of show you guys here in just a moment what I'm talking about. And check that out you guys, like that is really simple, really easy. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and if you did, let me know in the comment box down below. Take care you guys, God bless, and stay glam. You know I love you boo.